Welcome to Profile, the show that shares inspiring stories of ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things in this world. And our guest today is no different. As a child of immigrant parents in a community that is so different from what she could relate to, she struggled with finding her true identity and her place in this world. If you are someone who has experienced these challenges or you are going through them today, Stick around, you may find your answers here. Here is Margaret Lacan Francis. Hi, how Hi. are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> good to have you on our show. I'm so looking forward to hearing your story. <laughs> but in a nutshell, tell me, who is Margaret? It's a, it's a big question. Yeah. Um, not one that I've thought about because I'm usually head down just doing my thing. Um, but if I stop and pause, I think I identify mostly with uh, being a mom and being a wife and being a daughter. Uh, my family is everything to me. What keeps me going daily is the passions that I have. And so I found a way to address those passions professionally through architecture. But it wasn't a straight path. It was... Uh, trying out different ways of uh, making my way in the world um, and landing where I am today. Being a child of immigrant parents in a community where it's different from what you're used to, let's go back there. What was it like? What was it like for your parents coming to Canada and you born here in a community that is different from home? What was it like? probably very similar to other first-generation Canadians. Um, my parents are from Haiti. Um, unfortunately, I've never had the opportunity to spend much time in Haiti. Um, okay. But it is a very big part of who they are, who mm -hmm. they identify with, who our community is about. And I'm sure they pass on these values to you. Absolutely. Um, but then as a child, you're growing up in a different country. You're mm -hmm. growing up with Canadians who do things a little bit differently, you know. Um, some funny things, which I laugh about now, but I didn't laugh about back then. But, you know, I wanted to do sleepovers. And my parents were like, why are you going to somebody else's house? Right. <laughs> like, what, what is that about? Right. Um, so it's little things like that, which, you know, were struggles and, you know, um, you dealt with as a child. But... I think really uh, it's, it's uh, for me, it's kind of been a work ethic, which is uh, quite strong. Um, them uh, fighting to get to where they needed to get and to raise the family they wanted to raise and to, you know, um, be able to understand this new culture. That definitely resonated with me. So I see two parents working hard every day, and that's what I understand it means to be an adult. And so I do the same. Now, what brought your parents to Canada? Well, at the time, when they were young, um, there was a dictator in Haiti. And as they've explained it to me, people who were graduating from university at that time had a choice. And if they wanted to see a future for themselves, they had to look outside of the country. They tell me that around that time in Quebec, there was a huge uh, need for professionals, French-speaking professionals, and they kind of reached out to French-speaking countries around the world to see who would be interested in immigrating to, to Quebec specifically. That was uh, the motivation for uh, a large group of professionals from Haiti to go to Quebec and establish their lives, and that my parents were amongst that group. Nice. So what was your parents' profession? So my, my mother is a doctor, and my father studied as an architect and engineer, but uh, it's very difficult, still difficult today, very difficult then, for foreign-trained um, architects and engineers to practice in that same profession here. Um, it's the same for medicine, but uh, it was a little bit easier for my mother to make the transition. So my father in Canada uh, ended up teaching. Something special is that he designed our family home. Yeah. And yes, so yes. Uh, growing up, I saw him, you know, at the table after yes, work, kind yes, of, you yes. know, drafting and designing our dream home. And that was like the little nucleus in, in you know, the back of my mind as to, you know, a profession that I might want to go into. That's where it's all started. But we're going to get back to okay. that. <laughs> but one more thing I want to touch on during your childhood days. Now, there were certain acceptance you, uh, you, you mentioned, you talk about, and expectations that were different from your belief. Now, what was that like for you? It, it was difficult because uh, the experience of being an adolescent is that you don't want to be different. 
-hmm. You want to fit in. You want to be like everybody else. I grew up in a a very Anglo-Saxon uh, neighborhood, and so not a lot of other people had hair like me, who looked like me, who had parents who weren't from here. Again, it's it sounds like trivial things, but to a teenager growing up, these are things that kind of make up your life, right? Yes. So I want to be like my friends. I want to have the same experiences as my, as my friend, and I can't. Um, and I think maturity comes from understanding that there is something special about you that you want to retain. Yes. Um, and that, that's something that, as I've gotten older, I've kind of learned more about who I am, mm -hmm. how special that is, and how important it is to preserve that, as much as it is to, to integrate and be part of the community that you're in. Yes. Now, you talk about some of the things that you made, you made that worked for you, that helped you during those times. You talk about family. Mm -hmm. You also talk about traveling. Yeah. Tell us some more about that. I didn't realize that I had a different experience of life than other people until I started, uh, you know, traveling and seeing the world. Um, going to, I had a lot of family in New York, in the United States, Brooklyn, for example, and everywhere I looked, there was lots of diversity, mm -hmm. was very different from, you know, where back I grew home, up, yes. from back home. And so then you start to realize, okay, well, there's a different way of living. There's a different place that you could be. There's a different expression of who we are. You know, I've had uh, wonderful opportunities to travel around the world, and um, I remember one of my first trips to Europe, everybody loved Canadians, and I'm like, what's, what's the big deal about Canada? But right? then you start to realize it's actually a pretty amazing country to be in. So I think all of those things were part of me coming to understand myself and coming to understand what's important to me um, and what I wanted to do. My kids are at that age now where they're starting to look ahead and, you know, I'm going to university and what am I going to do with myself? And I, and I have conversations with them about some people know right away from a very young age that they're going to be X. Uh -huh. Other people, you figure it out along the way. That's and I'm definitely one of those people That's where I started off, um, I, went to, I went to do a bachelor's degree in university in Ontario and I went into business. Because okay. to me, there were three choices. This is what my parents told me. It's like doctor, lawyer, you know. Teacher. Teacher, <laughs> you yes, know. I know. Those were the things. Right? <laughs> and it, there's no, you know, it's just one of those three things. You, you get a good job, you get it, and yeah. you move on. Um, but then you get to university and you realize there's a huge, huge variety of things that you could do. But I ended up uh, going through and becoming a banker um, uh -huh. after... A couple of years working yes. in a bank, I realized this is not me. This is not me for the next 30 years. It's, it's just not me. You weren't getting the challenge. Passion just wasn't there. Um, it just wasn't the right fit for me. Whenever I kind of get that feeling like something's not quite right, I trust that gut instinct and I, and I think about it. Yes. Um, and sometimes it's not possible to kind of just drop everything and change your path. Right. Um, but at that point in my life, I was young. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a family. I didn't have anybody, you know, to mm -hmm. that depended on me specifically. Right. And so I thought, I'm going to make a change. I'll do it now. Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking about the things that I really loved. And that image of my father kind of designing the family home came back to me. And I thought... Well, maybe I'll look a little bit closer at what it takes to become an architect, because yeah. my original thoughts were that you had to be a fabulous artist, which I am not. Right. Um, <laughs> I um, and as I looked more into it, I realized, uh, you know, there, there's different ways of being an architect, and there's different skills that are needed to be an architect, and right. I had some of those, and so I thought, well, let me give it a shot. And so nice. um, I applied to universities and ended up going to Calgary. And of course, you mentioned that you didn't really have anything holding you back or stopping you from exploring? And there wasn't anybody holding me back, but what I did have was I had a lot of support from my family and my friends. Because mm -hmm. you can't always kind of change gears like that mm -hmm. um, without knowing that you've got a safety net, without right. knowing that if you really made a mistake that there isn't somebody there to help you. Yeah. And uh, I definitely felt that from my parents, you know. Wonderful. There's some hesitation as to why you're leaving a good job to go back to school, you know. Uh, so I'm going west of Toronto. I have no friends that I know of in Calgary. I don't have any family in Calgary. Right. I'm just, you know, me in my car. I just loaded up my car and just drove out west. I think the journey to Calgary was amazing. Um, if anybody ever has the opportunity to drive across Canada, this is a beautiful country. It is. It's it a is. beautiful country. And the, the zenness of kind of going across Ontario, northern Ontario is gorgeous, driving across the prairies, you know. 
it, it was a wonderful experience driving out there. Nice. Um, getting there, um, it was exciting. You yeah, know, I was right. trying something new. The study is very intense. Um, I can imagine. And so you don't see anybody else, really. You're just 24-7 with your classmates, doing your projects. Mm -hmm. You know, you're eating, drinking, sleeping, kind of the projects that you have to do. And so uh, I was lucky to have a group of... Um, of cohorts that were uh, we we gelled really well, nice. and so nice. we were friends. We hung out. We ended up uh, you know renting houses together and living together. So really, for four years, five years, I was with these group of people, um, pretty intensely, nice. and so they became my family out west, which nice. was great to have. Good to have that support system, and also it makes your time more enjoyable, and the time pass easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. no, the time I... did not pass easily, but <laughs> support. Um, and yeah. I think that's probably the biggest theme in my life is, is uh, identifying people uh, around me mm -hmm. that I can lean on, realizing that you can't do it all yeah. by yourself. And if you're lucky enough to have some people that you can lean on, that you can share struggles with, uh, mm -hmm. it makes everything uh, easier, but not necessarily easy. <laughs> you said it's five years? studies? Uh, it's, uh, you need a bachelor's degree um, in uh, something, okay. um, and depending on the school you're going into, they may have different requirements, but you need a bachelor's degree, and then uh, the architecture studies, it's a master's degree on top of that. So okay. when I was going through, it was a four-year bachelor, a four-year master's, and I actually extended both by a year. Um, and so, yeah, 10 years of study at the university level, and, yeah. you're, and you still, when you graduate, you're not an architect yet. What's different as well, or difficult, is uh, if you look at your high school mm -hmm. classmates, um, you're coming out of school at about 29, 30 years old. If they've gone through kind of your more typical path, they're mm -hmm. probably working full time. They've got, you know, looking to get a home. They're getting family, married. Yes. They're, they're starting their families. And so you feel a little bit behind. Um, those around you of the same age group because you've been studying for so long. Yes, put um, your, practically put your life on hold. Well, yeah, and then you just, you know, it's a, it's a moment again when you're questioning, should I be doing this? You're just looking around going, well, why did I do this? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know? But it's for the passion. And... But for the passion and for <laughs> and you love it, right? No. What helped you? What kept you going? And how did you find fulfillment during that time? It was difficult because was, for all was. the reasons you just said, it's like, why am I doing this? Why? And, and then you think about even when I'm done school, there's still a long road ahead to get to where I want to be. And so you question that. Um, and I think it's important. I think it's important to speak about it because sometimes you see someone who's achieved something and you don't realize the struggle, right? You That's just see the big. end result and you're like, They've got it made, so, you know, obviously I should be able to just kind of click my hands and be there too. And it definitely wasn't that for me. Yeah. So I questioned a lot. Um, a huge part of what kept me going is that um, of this friend group, um, I met my best friend, <laughs> my nice. husband. Um, and so we were literally in the same class going through this together, struggling together, questioning together. Having him to lean on and be able to kind of say, why am I doing this again? Remind me, um, was, was huge. Um, and I, I definitely credit that relationship and that friendship to helping me keep carry forward. Um, well I think uh, it's also once you start to have a little bit of success, you know, if someone along the way can give you a pat on the back, it's it's immense. You don't realize. It's a few, well, yeah. You don't realize how much it can mean to someone, but just somebody saying, you know what, you're doing this really well. Or part of architecture school is you'll do a project and you present it to um, mm. practicing architects. And there was a female architect who saw something in me. And she just, and I can't even remember what the comment was, but I, I remember exactly who it was. And she said something really positive to me that kind of just lifted me up and kept me going for, you know, a little bit while longer. So those pats on the back along the way definitely definitely carry you forward. Um, getting married, having children, and realizing, you know, I want to I wanna be a great example to my children. I want to show them that, you know, you can set a goal and accomplish it, that you can persevere. Um, so, so 
I think the people around me gave me strength and that's what kept me going. But um, so the path to architecture is long um, mm. and it's something in the profession that um, the regulators of the profession definitely understand and we're, we're trying to, to make that easier for people to come into the profession. But you, you have two degrees and then there's an internship program. Okay. Um, which is, uh, these interns are, are fully paid, you know, professionals. They're, they've got a master's degree, right? right, right. Um, but it's just, they can't call themselves an architect yet. So the term that we use in the profession is intern architect. Okay. Um, and that's about, um, again, about four years of work experience for an architect. Um, during that time, you're still, you're writing quite a few exams. And depending on the province that you're getting registered in, there may also be an interview. Wow. It's a lot. Just a side note, though. If I see someone that says, I'm an architect, I should assume that person is about 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the gray hair comes from, you know, the past <laughs> two. Yes. It's, it's a long road. It is. It is, right? No... I'm glad you, you shed light on that, the process to become an architect. Now, because one of the things I've observed is that I don't see a lot of architects, especially from the diverse community, especially females. So my question then is, is there a barrier, besides the length of time, what are the barrier of entry is there? Is it something for rich people? Is it... Who becomes architect? It's, I mean, it's many layers of what you just said. Um, the length of time mm. and the timing of when you're going through it in your life, mm. right? So you're in your early 30s trying to make your way through that process. So if you do have a desire to be a parent, to be married, um, that's around the time that m most of us do that, right? In mm. our early 30s or late 20s. And so... Um, uh, taking the time to have a child, taking time to spend at home with the child, you know, parental leave, all of that interrupts that process, which is already very long. Mm -hmm. And so that's one huge um, barrier. barrier, deterrent to mm -hmm. kind of proceeding through and becoming a registered architect. The, um, what I find is also difficult as a person of color um, and as a female is there aren't enough people of color who are in the profession, visibly, right? Mm -hmm. If they're there, I just, I, I haven't seen them, right. <laughs> right? And I'm in the profession, and I'm quite heavily um, involved mm -hmm. in the profession. And so I think as, as someone who is trying to look ahead and see what could I be, what could I do, um, if you don't see examples, mm -hmm. it's harder to imagine being yes. that. Yes, right. because you're going to need that support system, right? Well, you need that support system, but a, a lot of it is just kind of visualizing, you know, could that be me? You know, do yes. I want to do what this other person is doing? You know, I see yes. somebody I admire and I want to do what they do, right? Yes. But if there isn't an example of that, right, right. there's more women in the, in the profession, which is amazing. Um, nice. I don't think there's enough people of color. And I, I'm hoping that uh, I can be one of these people that someone sees and says, hey, you know, maybe I'd, I could be like her, or maybe I could do it better than her. Whatever it is that inspires them, right? Yes. But, um, but it is a profession that's very exciting. It is something that people could do, and so I hope more of us do it. Now, you become an architect, and you said, I want more. <laughs> yeah. How did it happen? Because during that internship period, you're working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. Um, but throughout my life, there's been different times when I could be part of the team or I could lead the team. And I, as hard as I try to be part of the team, I usually end up kind of taking on responsibility and wanting to kind of, you know, be a leader. Yeah. And so um, when I finished my internship and I was actually uh, finished all the requirements and I became a registered architect, mm -hmm. some of those ideas were in my mind. Could I, could I do it myself? You know, do I have to be part of... The firm or could I lead my own my own work and I didn't do it right away um, there was a, a period where the firm that I was with was doing some work for the Olympic Committee so this was around the time when the Olympics were coming to Vancouver um, the games were in 2010 but in 2007 uh, they were hiring like crazy 
And one of the projects that my firm did was one of the major venues for the Olympics. Mm. And at the project table was the Olympic Committee. And I came to understand that there are construction people who work for the Olympic Committee. And I just, I, again, I, until you see it, you don't realize it. And then I discovered this amazing world of um, architecture for events. Wow. When you think of your dream job, your dream position, that was it for me, where everything aligned, all the stars aligned, and I was just so excited to be there every day. Nice. And so um, when it came to an end, which <laughs> unfortunately at some point the, the event happened, um, I looked around and realized that most of my colleagues were from outside of Vancouver. And so I thought, well, you know, I'm an architect, I can do work on my own. Maybe this is an opportunity for me to continue doing this kind of work for myself. And that's how I started my, my first firm. How long did you have that first firm for? Six, seven years, I would say. Um, so, again, around that time in Vancouver, there were some major events. FIFA, Women's World Cup for oh. soccer was in town. I had the opportunity to work in Toronto as well on the Pan Am Games. And so there was some, a lot of really exciting big events happening in Canada around that time frame. And so that's when I was most active. Um, mm -hmm. Life-wise, though, uh, my children were young. I didn't that's see my happened. husband. I didn't see my children because it was it's a very work, demanding, work, work. demanding role. And so, again, that little gut feeling kind of said, you know, I think I need a little bit of an adjustment. And there was an opportunity to work for one of my clients as an employee. And I thought, you know, I think that's that's a better place for me now. Um, and, and so you have to watch your time. Yeah. Because as an entrepreneur, the struggle is quite real. <laughs> you're, especially if you're a sole entrepreneur, right? You've, you're wearing 10,000 different hats to make the company go and to fix every little thing. And it was just, there was nothing left of me for anything else in my life. And uh, the opportunity to work for a company was just, it was what I needed at that time, absolutely. And it gave me, yeah, it gave me a break. It gave me the time to kind of enjoy my family, um, which was great. So how long was that break for? Um, about three years. Because three again, years. that little, I was working yes. for someone that wasn't leading the show. <laughs> so I'm just like, like <laughs> just on, I got to get that cap <laughs> <laughs> All right, which you did. Which I did. Yes. Um, but um, I thought about my experiences mm -hmm. when I was alone, mm -hmm. um, trying to run the company. Um, and then my experiences as an employee and realized I loved running the company, but one of the things that was very difficult is I had no one at the company level to share any of the struggles with. To me, the benefit of being in a partnership, which I'm in now, yeah. is having somebody else to, to lean on, to, to yes. talk through issues with, to kind of plan the success and the path that we're going to take together. And so you're not carrying the full weight of everything on your own shoulders. Um, and that's great. And to actually, you know, have someone who's has bring some experience as well to the table and you learn from their experiences and your experiences and you bring it together and then the company is, is doing well because of that mesh, right? If you right. find a good partnership. And you found a good partner, right? Yeah. Um, I do a lot of um, uh, volunteer work for a professional association and um, she was a fellow volunteer. And so okay. we were friends okay. and it didn't, until we kind of had lunch one day and said, hey... <laughs> Why don't we work together? It just had never occurred to us. So we'd known each other for four or five years and uh, enjoyed, the, you know, the friendship quite well. And then uh, it just, there, over one lunch, it just seemed to be that we were in the same place at the same time, kind of thinking, kind of tired of doing this on my own. You know, I'd love to have a partner. And so we, uh, we explored it further. Emerged. No. do you think we have enough mentors for these youth? Or growing up looking for people to emulate? I think that's one of the difficulties as um, someone of color mm -hmm. when you're looking across to who you could be mm -hmm. and what you could do is that there aren't enough examples of people who are doing it of mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a lot of people doing different professions but right. people of color aren't as visible and I think the more that those of us who are in the later stages of our careers, the more that we can be out there, the more that we can talk to youth, to talk to people who are um, in our communities, um, 
the more that they will dream, I think, right? And as a community, that's what makes a community thrive. That's what helps us grow as a community is um, we start to get out there. We mentor, mentor our youth. We start to say to them, yes, you can, yes, you can. This is something, this is a possibility for you. Um, and then they will grow up and hopefully do the same. And in short order, I hope, <laughs> there will be a number of us and it won't be such a mystery um, what an architect is and whether or not there should be some in our community and whether or not we should do this, right? right. I think um, it's important for right. us to be out there as much as we can and to um, be examples of the profession, be examples of things that can be possible in our community. Now, looking back at your life, what would you have changed? Would mm -hmm. anything you have done differently? I think one of the things that, for me, allows me to take chances is that I decided long ago that I'm at this fork in the road and I'm going to make the best decision for myself now mm -hmm. and if it doesn't work out, I'm not going to get down on myself about it, okay. right? Yes. Because you made the best decision given everything you knew. In hindsight, you can always go back and go, oh, I shouldn't have done that, right? But at the time, you have, you have all the information you have, you make the best decision you can, and you go with it. Um, and that's, that's what's kind of kept me going. So I try not to look back and say I shouldn't have done that. Definitely there were some things that made it harder. <laughs> you know, uh, there, were, there were definitely easier ways to get through um, some of the things that I did, but it's also made me who I am now. Um, and I feel, I feel pretty excited about where I am in my life. And so I think the ups and the downs, the slips and the falls, you know, they're all part of making you who you are. I know you are, you, are, you are a big advocate for helping young people, especially women, to, to be their best self. Now, why is this so important to you? I think, I hope it's different now, but growing up, there's a certain image of what you can do as mm -hmm. a woman, who you can be as an immigrant, the mm -hmm. spaces that you're allowed to be in, the things you're allowed to say, the things you're allowed to do. Um, and I don't think that's true, right? right? And so I I think that there's a lot of very strong people um, who are being told you can't. And I would like to make sure that they know that you can. If it's who you are, what you want, then you go for it. Um, and it may be hard, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It may be something that no nobody's ever done before, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it, right? right? Yeah. And so um, I'm hoping that in my kind of daily struggles and, my, <laughs> you know, my slips and falls, that people can see that, you know, there is something that I'm aiming for and I'm hoping I'm going to get there um, and I'm going to keep doing it. And I, that's what I'd love to see for my daughters is that um, they go after what their passion is. Um, that's what I hope for the young people out there. And I hope that there's fewer and fewer people who are saying to them they can't because that's not... It's not right. It's not fair. Um, I think if you have a passion for something, go for it. Thank you so much. Now, what's next for you? Oh, geez. <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah. What's next for me? Um, I'm in an exciting place uh, professionally. Um, yeah. our, our company is um, doing some very exciting work that we're mm. um, passionate about. Um, not only immigrant communities, but communities that have kind of social hardships, and we're we're doing um, what we can to help out with those, which is which is great. Um, mm -hmm. I like to do work where we are building up um, those around us, mm -hmm. um, and in our small way, you mm -hmm. know, we're we're just designing a building, designing a space. But if that um, helps provide services to them, helps. Um, um, them feel better where they are, then that's, that's an amazing thing. Um, so professionally, it's a great place, um, and I hope to do more, and I hope that the company will grow um, that way. Um, personally, um, it's exciting, a little bit sad for me, but my, my children are growing up and making their mark on the world, and so I'm saying goodbye, which is horrible, right. but also with so much pride watching my, my children grow and kind of um, go out into the world, which is fantastic. Um, and um, 
thankfully I'm able to look back and say, you know, I did take some shifts and change some things in my life, which gave me uh, the chance to kind of experience this with them. Um, some time with my husband, um, and now we have a puppy, which is great. So, so yeah, so it's, uh, I think I'm in a good place, which is, which is amazing. It's a beautiful place. I can <laughs> hear it in your voice. I, 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 it just, it just shows you. Wonderful. Happy <laughs> for you. Now, you have been there, mm. you know, you, an immigrant, a child of immigrant parents. You had your challenges in your community with, you know, your struggles, your own struggles, and you have overcome them. It may take a while, it may take trial and error, but you have, you have done it. And one of the things that I, I know for a fact is that a lot of people are struggling with these things. Now, my question to you is, if anyone would like to have a conversation with you, can they contact you, and how can they? Absolutely. Um, I definitely have a, a website through my company. Through there, they can learn about my company, and if they'd like to reach out, absolutely. Um, I uh, am very excited for any opportunity that I can to help to help people around me. Uh, that's why I do what I do. I, I do it through buildings, but really, deep down, it's about supporting my community around me, which is also why I do a tremendous amount of volunteering. But I just, to me, that's what fuels me. That's what gets me going is, uh, what can I do? Is usually what, you know, if, if I see something, I'm like, well, what can I do to kind of get in there and help? And so uh, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. It is, it's very rich. You know, you have done a lot for yourself and you are doing it for helping others as well. I appreciate it so much, and I'm sure everyone here appreciates you and what you're doing for us as well, as, as being that example that we are looking for and wanting to emulate. So thank you for doing it, and continue to, to do what you're doing. It's <laughs> well, making a big difference. Thank and you. Again, I, I, it, it's, uh, it's amazing to hear that it's making a difference. I just put my head down and do my thing, but uh, it's amazing when it's recognized, and yes. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. And of course, we are here to help you to be your best self. I hope you find today's episode inspiring and you can learn and use the message from today's discussion to help yourself to overcome your challenges, to help to find that identity and be your best self. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Right, bye for now. <coughs> <laughs> you're allowed to come. Well, actually these days, no you're not. <laughs>